In 2010, Walt Disney Animation Studios announced that they would no longer be working on fairy tale films because they claimed that they were no longer profitable and that audiences were simply not interested in them anymore. Now let's skip ahead to 2013 when a little fairy tale film entitled Frozen was released by Disney, which is now the highest grossing animated film of all time. So what happened in those three years to change everyone's outlook? Well, to answer that question, we'll have to go back about 70 years. In 1943, Walt Disney's relatively new animation studio was booming from the success of films such as Snow White, Pinocchio, and Dumbo. They were on what seemed to be a continuous roll by creating some of the biggest movies of that time, and their next big project was going to be a film adaptation of The Snow Queen, a book written by Hans Christian Andersen a hundred years prior. The book revolves around a young boy who was stricken with the inability to see good in the world. So one day he was taken away by the Snow Queen to her ice palace where she wiped out his memory clean of any recollection of his friends or family. At this point his friend Gerda then goes on a journey to save him. The original idea was to make multiple short animations for each of Anderson's most famous stories, then add them to a documentary about the author's life. But plans fell apart when Disney was unable to convert the Snow Queen's dark tone and story into a relatable film for moviegoers. You see, the Snow Queen as a character is described as a beautiful woman made of ice with the power to control snow. While Walt Disney himself found the character fascinating, the story sets her up as an evil villain, with the tale having no real final confrontation between her and the hero. With this, they simply couldn't figure out how to reimagine the story, so Disney dropped out of the project and shelved many of their ideas. Throughout the next few decades, different employees at Disney attempted to take a crack at the Snow Queen, without any of them really going anywhere. One of the most unique ideas was started in the 1970s, when Mark Davis wanted to design an attraction at Disneyland that would involve a ride where you travel through the Snow Queen's Ice Palace, but plans for this were scrapped in the early stages. The most substantial attempt to create the film since the 40s occurred during the Disney Renaissance in the 90s. To briefly explain this period, after the death of Walt Disney in 1966, the company lacked guidance on how to run the studio. So for the next 20 years, Disney was out of its prime, until a slew of quality movies started to pour in during the 1990s, which coincidentally started with The Little Mermaid, another one of Anderson's stories. This era then continued on throughout the decade with films such as Aladdin and The Lion King. With the revival of princess movies, Disney once again attempted to make the Snow Queen film. But by 2003, well after the renaissance had concluded, all the ideas were put aside yet again. The next adaptation of the Snow Queen they started developing was a stage musical that would play at many of their theme parks. After being okayed by Disney, development began with the creation of many of the songs and the announcement being shared with the press. But the musical was suddenly cancelled when supposedly Walt Disney Animation Studios said that they were going to take yet another stab at creating a feature length film. Like all the other attempts to adapt this fairy tale, the people at Disney were having trouble creating a satisfying story. But Disney was eager to make it work because along with this they were also developing two other princess movies, which were The Princess and the Frog and Rapunzel. In 2009, The Princess and the Frog was released in theaters, with much praise from critics for bringing Disney back to their 2D animated musical roots. But audiences didn't seem to agree because it did very poorly by Disney's standards. They viewed the lackluster results as a sign that audiences were just not interested in the classic fairy tale princesses anymore, and that they couldn't sink so much money into movies that would only be viewed by young girls. So with this, they planned Rapunzel to be their last princess movie, and stopped the production on the Snow Queen yet again. To try to make back their huge $260 million investment on Rapunzel, they changed the name of the film to Tangled, and created marketing based around the male lead character Flynn. This was an interesting approach because they figured that young girls would see it either way, so they spent their budget advertising it to male demographics. When released, Tangled turned out to be a big success, with it making over twice as much money as The Princess and the Frog did the previous year. This gave Disney enough hope in fairy tales that they brought back the Snow Queen from the dead again, but this time it was here to stay. By this point, things started coming together for the Snow Queen, which was soon changed to Frozen to fall along in the footsteps of Tangled. They created the concept that the two female leads were now sisters, which would add a sibling dynamic to the film. To write the script for Frozen, they brought in Jennifer Lee, who had just recently finished work on Wreck-It Ralph. Because of time restraints on finishing the project, she was soon brought in as a co-director. 
The film was shaping up to be a story about Elsa, the Snow Queen who purposely striked Anna in the heart with her freezing powers. At this point in the development, the film had a very black and white distinction between the good and the bad. But that was about to change when they brought in Robert Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez to write the songs. Most notable for their work creating the music for the Book of Mormon and Avenue Q, Kristen and Robert quickly went to work. One day they sent in a song that they had written in merely a day and a half entitled Let It Go, which was a song for Elsa to sing after she stopped trying to conceal her powers. Everyone working on Frozen realized this song needed to be in the final film, but it just didn't work with Elsa being portrayed as the villain. So they went back to the drawing board and created one of the key aspects of the final movie, which was that instead of making Elsa an honest story one of good versus evil, they instead changed it to one of love against fear. With this, they went to work rewriting the script yet again so they could finish before their deadline. Frozen had the release date set as November 27, 2013, and with this they started advertising. Following Tangled's strategy of marketing it mainly to boys, almost all of the advertisements for the movie revolved around Olaf the Snowman. This campaign led to most to believe that Frozen was going to be a movie about an annoying snowman, rather than the relationship between two sisters. Because of this, many thought Frozen was not going to be very good. This attitude towards the movie showed up in the box office results, when Frozen came in only second place for its opening week. While moviegoers went to see the newest installment of The Hunger Games Thanksgiving Day, the people that decided to give Disney's newest movie a chance would witness what would unexpectedly soon become one of Disney's biggest and arguably greatest films of all time. With critics and audiences both talking about Frozen, it became number one at the box office in its second week. But things didn't stop there. People continuously talked about the music and story while letting people know that the snowman is not nearly as bad as the trailers would make them believe. With covers of Let It Go continuously being uploaded to YouTube and Facebook, people started to take notice. Then finally, award season came around, and Frozen won both Best Original Song and Animated Film at the Academy Awards. By the time Frozen had been out for six months, it made over a billion dollars, making it the highest grossing animated film of all time, and the sixth biggest overall. That's impressive considering seven of the other films in the top ten are sequels, and the other two are hyped up James Cameron movies. So how did Frozen, a movie that didn't even make it to number one on its opening weekend, make it so far? Well, first of all, the story is very original and extremely well done. A story about two sisters is not done very often in films, and Frozen knocked it right out of the ballpark this time, with you really feeling for Elsa and Anna. The story throws out many of the Disney stereotypes as well, with them blatantly making fun of the concept of love at first sight. All this plus an unexpected ending leads this to be a very fresh take on an old tale. Secondly is the music, which Robert and Kristen really outdid themselves with. Every single song perfectly fits the mood of the scene, whether it be Do You Want to Build a Snowman, summing up 10 years in only 3 minutes, or Let It Go, expressing Elsa's newly found freedom. It all just works so perfectly with this movie. As I mentioned, the non-stop stream of cover songs online almost prevented anyone who uses the internet not to know about this movie, which continuously got more and more people to give it a shot. The film album was so successful it was at the top of the Billboard charts for 13 weeks, making it one of the most successful soundtracks of all time. Finally we have the visuals, which are absolutely stunning. Frozen has some of the most natural looking human animations I've ever seen. The amount of subtle movement in their facial expressions is truly amazing. While you could get away with having an animal look not 100% right, audiences are able to pick up on if a human doesn't look perfect, so Disney really stepped up their game. They also spent a massive amount of time perfecting a snow engine specifically for Frozen that makes it have some of the best looking snow ever seen in CGI. All this combined to create a perfect storm of a movie that will continue to make Disney money for years to come. With this, many may ask where the series will go next. Well, as of right now, Disney is currently creating a Broadway musical adaptation of Frozen, which they are stressing quality over timeliness. When this comes out, I don't even want to think about how hard it will be to get tickets for, considering the amount of hype it's receiving already. Along with the musical, most of the people behind Frozen have hinted at the desire to make a sequel, which some say should be expected by 2018, but take that prediction with a grain of salt. 
I've heard a lot of people claim that Disney Animation Studios would screw up this sequel like they do all the others. But this mentality is completely unjustified, since Walt Disney Animation Studios has only ever made one sequel, which was The Rescuers Down Under, which by most is considered better than the original. Now some may say, what about Cinderella 2, or The Jungle Book 2, or The Lion King 1 and a half? Well, those were made by Disney Toons, another Disney studio that specializes in making quick straight-to-DVD cash-ins. So as long as they don't get their hands on Frozen, there's no reason to assume a sequel would be horrible. It's also not a stretch of the imagination to think that we may get some sort of half an hour special, along the lines of what many DreamWorks films and Toy Story have received. At the end of the day, we could look at Frozen as a hope for the movie industry, because it shows that original and well-made films are just as capable of making money as mindless sequels. So here's hoping that Disney can continue this streak of quality films with their upcoming Big Hero 6, Zootopia, and Giants. So those are just a few of my ideas on why Frozen became such a hit, and if you have any of your own, please feel free to leave a comment below. So until next time, thanks for watching.